Hey guys and welcome back for a quick Tuesday tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a dog collar. I'm actually going to be repurposing her old hardware from her collar, but if you want to go over to Dollar Tree and get one of the collars there that will fit your dog, and then grab the same size leash, and then you can take the hardware off of the collar, and then we'll use the webbing from the leash. This will be a fully adjustable collar and there will also be a spot to put your little tag. So in honor of Canada Day, I did choose to use this Canadian fabric and it's a great way to show the pride in your country, especially with 4th of July coming up. So the first thing I did was dismantle Nala's old collar. As you can see, it's pretty dirty, um, but the pieces are still good and I just washed it up and they were good to go. So if you do get the collar from the Dollar Tree, you will get some black hardware, a black buckle, a silver D-ring, and then a black adjustable slider. So next I'm going to take that leash and I'm gonna cut it to size. So if you took your old collar, you can measure the length, or if you take the collar that you purchased at the Dollar Tree, you can measure that length. My dog is a large dog, so it was about 24 inches in length, and that will give me a good range of adjustment and then I'm just gonna cut my webbing to that size. And then I'm gonna take a piece of fabric and I took the measurement of my webbing, so it is one inch thick, double that, and then add another inch. So my piece of fabric is three inches wide by about 25 inches in length. We're gonna be able to encase the whole entire webbing. So I'm just going to do some ironing and some basting. So I'm just gonna fold down the short side about a half an inch and then I'm gonna place my webbing on top about a half inch up from the long edge. Now after cutting my piece of fabric and starting to do this process, I realized very quickly that this Canadian fabric is actually really, really bad. <laughs> and it actually has a little bit of stretch in it, which is surprising since it's cotton and there shouldn't be any stretch. But um, it wasn't being very cooperative, so I would definitely use a more quality fabric if you are going to be doing this. Um, so basically, I just went and got a glue stick to help me along this process. So I'm just going to glue the areas and then I'm just going to press it and that will set my glue and keep everything in place. So, so I'm just going to fold up the fabric over that webbing a half inch all the way down the one edge of the fabric. And then I'm going to baste as I go because like I said, it was not very good fabric. <laughs> If it had a thicker cotton that was more rigid and you know no stretch in it, then this would work perfectly. But this fabric wanted to fight me. It didn't want to do what I wanted it to do. So we're just gonna go all the way down the one edge. And I did cut this long, so when I get down to the end, I just cut it so that it was a half inch longer than the webbing. And then I'll just fold up that end over top of the webbing to encase that and make your corners nice and use more glue <laughs> and then I'll just fold up the webbing again I'll press that and then I fold it down the raw edge towards the webbing so that it was all nice and even And this will be the back of the collar, so on the inside, so you won't even see that. You'll just see the nice other side where it's nice and clean. So once you're done that, you're just going to sew all the way around the whole entire piece with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. For this step, I am using just a regular needle, but for the next step, I'm actually going to be using a stronger needle just because we will be going through at least three layers of the webbing. So just keep that in mind when we go to do the installation of our hardware. So the first thing we're going to do is slip on our D-ring. We're going to put the male end of our buckle on next. And as you can see, you go in and then you go back out. You're gonna give yourself about four or five inches and then you're going to make sure that that D-ring is inside that loop. Fold down your webbing about a quarter of an inch to half an inch and then we're going to place that up against 
the other side of the strap. We're going to sew along the folded edge and then we're going to sew again about an inch after that and we're going to have the D-ring in between the seams just so that it doesn't move around too much and hit the buckle. So like I said, I put on a stronger needle for this portion and I'm just going to go back and forth about four or five times and again I'm going to move down one inch and I'll do that exact same thing going back and forth about four or five times. So this is how it should be looking and then next we're going to install our adjustable slider and the female end of our buckle. So go to the other end of the webbing and we will place our adjustable slider on first. So we're going to go in to the adjustable slider and then out the other side. And then we'll take our female end of our buckle. We will go through the top of it. And then we're going to push the webbing through the adjustable slider so that as you can see it kind of comes up and creates a loop. We're going to take the end, stick it up through the adjustable slider and back out. And we're gonna secure that onto itself right there. We need to pull the strap through the adjustable slider just so that we can have access when we go to put it through our machine because it's a little tight in this area. So I'm just going to pull it through so it looks like that. The first time you put adjustable sliders like on purses and things like that it's a little bit confusing but once you figure it out the first time maybe even the second time, then uh, it's not too difficult after that. It's always good though to take a picture of maybe your collar or something like that just so that you make it exactly the same way and you can refer back to that photo. Okay, and then we're just going to sew along that folded portion again and we will do about four or five times just so you can make sure that it is nice and secure. And then that's it. So you can make one for every occasion and it is so cheap if you go and get the Dollar Tree hardware. And if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you make one, I would love to see it. So please hit me up over at Instagram and Facebook. All those links are in the description box below and post a picture of your fur baby wearing their new collar. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye guys.